You look around at all these other churches in your community, and they're everywhere. They're on Google, on the web. They're, they're, every time you turn around, you see them. And then there's your church. Nowhere to be found. Where do these guys and gals get all this money to do this? And if I did have some money, where's the best what place for me to spend those dollars to be able to communicate what's happening in our church to the people in our community? Well, stay tuned for this episode. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Here we go. You know, I was talking to a designer who really had some uh, great expertise in uh, the ad side of things and the marketing side of things here. And uh, I was working with a nonprofit and we wanted to talk to this ad guy about the idea of a buy, doing a billboard buy in this particular area where the nonprofit was located. And this ad guy, uh, a brilliant guy, but he he could be arrogant in some sense, but he was so brilliant, he said, that's the dumbest thing in the world to do. Now, if you happen to be <laughs> a person who's a billboard guy or gal, just ride through me with this. And we talked, and he he began to help redirect us to a better use of our advertising dollar. And here's the drill. We didn't have an unlimited supply of money. Right. I'm going to bet you don't have an unlimited supply of money. Yes, we know the Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hills, but you got a decimal point in your checking account and savings account, and how much <laughs> money you spend for marketing is very defined. And what we want to do today is we want to talk to you about where uh, where the, where a church could spend their uh, marketing dollars communicating the good that's happening inside the church to those outside the church. So uh, let's get started with this. Um, we, we do want to mention that in episode 37, uh, we talked specifically on how to market your church, and we did some general flyovers mm -hmm. of some of the more specifics we're going to do here. Uh, one of the things we do recommend is that a church um, start with 3% of their income going to marketing to advertise your church. Now, if you're not at 3%, you may say, well, we're just, we're toast. We're, no, you're not. You really recommend you get between three and 8%, but you gotta get to three first. Yeah. And if you're not there, start. Right. Just start with something mm -hmm. that begins to move you, maybe a half a percent, 1%, 2%, 3%, yeah. get to that point, and then you can begin to work yourself to 8%. But uh, that's a general uh, look at the, the total amount of money you you are spending on right. marketing. But we want to now drill into some specifics on where to spend your marketing dollars. Yeah, and I think the key on all of this that we're going to be looking at today is really about spending your money in a way that's going to help you reach the most people. Going to give It's going to give you exposure yep. so that way as people maybe are new to the area and they're looking for a church or if they're just wanting to explore faith in Christ and mm -hmm. they think, oh, we need to go to church. You know, I, I know what it's like just uh, in my neighborhood. You talk to families and they're like, well, we know we need to get back into church because the kids are the kids yeah. need to be in church. Right. So, right. you know, they there's all these different reasons, of course, why people need to do it. Well, so because people are at different points and recognizing their need to maybe go try church out, uh, even though I know that, you know, well, they're just they're for, trying. For whatever their reason is. Exactly. Yeah. That if there's exposure out there, for your local church, that's going to uh, increase the ability for them to come there yeah. and see that exposure. And so that's kind of the framework, what we're talking about. And so now what I want to do is I want to jump into the first area where you want to spend some dollars uh, for what we call marketing, and that would be your website. Exactly. Making sure your website is up to speed. It's relevant and current with the way websites look today. You know, you remember back in the 1990s, if yeah. you want to think back to the, <laughs> to the 1900s, that's you know, right. it's yeah. hard to believe that, uh, you know, that's so long ago now, but websites back then look way different than websites look now. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I still will go visit church websites once in a while and I see this archaic looking website yeah. Yeah. that's not mobile friendly. It's not, um, you know, it doesn't look relevant with all the way other websites that people visit look. So yep. think in terms of what are the websites you're visiting on a regular basis now and the way they look, does the church's website look similar to yep. that or not? Not, I mean, obviously the layout's all different stuff, but just in terms of it being mobile friendly, it um, having a, a current look and appearance Design wise, What's is it, it feel like? Yeah, yeah, design wise, is it relevant and current with just the trends of of the of the day yep, to day? Yep. And 
And so that's important because, mm -hmm. because, and the reason it's important is because website is really the, the most of the time people are going to the website first. First. Yeah, before they're looking at it's the primary real estate for your church. Well, yeah, it really is. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, we talk about that, and and we've done a lot of other discussions about that. Where now this is really the first place people might drive by your church physically. No, normally, physical they're going to drive by your website first, but they're going to yep, exactly. Yep. And so that's why that's important. Second thing, let me let oh. me mention on that, Jonathan. It, um, one of the things that I'm amazed that churches miss is that they they don't have Google reviews. Uh, on their website. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is so easy to do. I'm just telling you right now, do an exercise, get your phone out and just type in churches in your town. So whatever yep. your town is and see where your church lands. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, somebody like Jonathan's neighbors, that's what they're going to do first. I mean, yeah. if they have a relationship with your a neighbor, fine. But yeah. uh, churches in uh, Kansas City, churches in uh, Boise, churches in Miami, yeah. see where your church comes up. Unfortunately, most of the times your church, church isn't going to come up, but you could get there yeah. if you'll get Google reviews. And all you have to do is one by one starting to ask people in the church to go write a review for you yeah. and give you a five star rate. You get those five stars, and boom, yeah. you come up. You your come search, up, yeah, comes up. Much you come up on. on you you got to be on the first. If you're not on the first page, you don't exist. Yeah. But that'll put put you on the first page and then start moving you to the top. Yeah. Want to insert that? Yeah, that's a little bonus tip. A little right bonus there, tip you know? for you right there. <laughs> uh, so then the second area where you want to spend some marketing dollars is on photography. And so if you have people that are gifted with photography in, in your church, you know, capitalize on them and use them from a voluntary standpoint. Uh, you want to get um, good quality photos of people in the church, yeah. not just a bunch of stock photos. People know when you're looking at a website with stock photos. And so this is going to be on the website. This might be something you put on social media. This might be, um, you know, you might have other uses of it. But you want to have good photography of your people and have it be a representation of um, of, of really the church. And, and so you want to make sure that you do that. If you don't have volunteers who are good, it can get good quality, then this is where you may need to hire someone. You might want to spend a little bit of your, those marketing dollars yep, exactly. to find someone because it's so important. Well, I can tell you, uh, the two of us have become a believer on this. Ryan Wakefield over at Church Marketing University talked about this here a couple of years ago. We were just in conversation and we're going, oh, photography, yeah, it's important. But I mean to tell you, yeah. uh, 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 he's made believers out of us. That when you really begin to put focus on this, and I'm telling you, you got generally, let me tell you what's going to be, generally a younger female in your church is an amateur photographer and they want to get better and they'll do a great job for you. Yeah. Getting you absolutely. footage that you will absolutely love. In fact, we talk about this in episode 33, uh, four habits of growing churches mm -hmm. and photography is one of those four habits. So yeah. um, I just want to give a little reinforcement. There. Well, and then we have some tips on how to uh, maximize your the church photography on our blog. And so if you yeah. go to the leaders.church slash blog, I don't know the exact site, but uh, URL, but go to leaders.church slash blog. Uh, then there's a search bar there where you can search and just type in church photography. Yeah. And uh, we've, got, we've got a blog. It's yeah. kind of like a whole breakdown tutorial of, of things to be thinking through and doing to help you get that photography that you need for the church. You know, and another thing that just uh, dovetails right off that photography, Jonathan, is to get a great, what I call, invite video. And... Um, it is now when, when you when you do when you talk to churches. I, I normally recommend it be the lead pastor. Is that yes? Uh, normally, agreed. Yeah. normally you're the lead pastor. Uh, although the older the lead pastor gets, you will want to you want to create the images of younger families in the church because the younger families are the ones most likely to make it. First of all, most likely to be on the website looking for a church. Yeah. So uh, while it's okay to be 50, 60, 70 years old. You want to be sure that your video is showcasing younger yeah. and younger so you families. So have some, if it's the older pastor. Yeah, you want to showcase. Show, show some footage of footage, others. Some B-roll of mm -hmm. younger families. Now, you. you this could be pastor and spouse too, I might interject. Oh, yeah, yeah certainly, so. certainly. And um, you can, you may have to spend a little money on this. Um, it, it, and uh, to make it, re it's got to be really, really good. Yeah. You know, you can slap yourself up against a wall and just sh shoot a video, but make this good because you're talking. Yeah. You're talking to Jonathan's neighbors he's talking about. Yep. You're talking to them. Yep. And they're thinking, they're thinking they're, the is people, this a place I want to yeah, start taking? That's right. I'm starting, I'm starting to think about I need to get my kids in. Do I want to take my kids 
to be with you. Yeah. And so um, you may, maybe you're going to yeah. spend upwards to $1,000 on it. Now, you may gulp and say, oh, where, where are we going to get that? Well, let me tell you something. You've got to put the best foot forward. Well, and you you are a master at talking about the return on investment. You oh. know, a lot of times we don't think about church ministry and ROI, but you you spend the thousand dollars. All it takes is one new person to attend a church. Well, sometimes a half of a person. Right? Well, true. Depending yeah. on the, the yeah, a half a person to a full person. Well, what's a half a person? Yeah. To to pay for that. So I mean, it's a slam dunk decision to me. Yeah. Because the return on investment is that good. Right. And in a in a period of one year. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we're not advising you to do things to only get one person in a year. Yeah. Way more than that. So yeah. anyway, kind of okay. got excited. I know. That, so. I know. Uh, then the, the, the fourth thing, uh, so far, so far we have website, photography, uh, invite video, and then the fourth thing is social media. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you aren't on social media as uh, for your church, then you need to start there. But if you are on there, then you might even throw a little bit of um, marketing dollars toward it. So that might be boosting a post. Uh, that might be doing some kind of sort of Facebook ads. Uh, and, you know, we could dive deeper on another discussion about that. But the point is you want to be able to do stuff like that to be able to get that exposure. It, this, again, it all goes back to exposure. Yeah. The more people can see, you know, what what you're, you know, what's happening in your church and you're communicating what's happening inside, you know, they that's going to help them when it, whenever it's they're thinking about coming to church or whether they're new to the area, whatever the case may be. That's going to help them see, um, you know, that what's going on and, and help them. And make social that media is social. It's not your bullhorn. So if you think, oh, I'll just this is social media, we'll go make announcements. That's a loser. Mm-hmm. You want to be social, which means you're going to have to pay attention to it yeah. and interact with people. Yeah. Again, you see this illustration of some neighbors of Jonathan's. Yeah. You know, they're thinking about it. They go on. They post something. Talk to them. Yeah. And that's the great value of social media. Yeah. You know, we've got something uh, rolling up here um, here in the next two episodes here of Church Tips. We've got our guest, Ryan Wakefield, re- referenced Ryan earlier with Church Marketing University. And uh, he has put together a church marketing conference, which is free to you. And I'm I'm excited about it. Yeah. He, he allowed Jonathan and I to be part of it. And uh, on September 29th and 30th, there will be a live conference free to you and your team. So you go to, um, what is this, leaders.church slash conference. Leaders.church slash conference. We'll have it in the show notes. And uh, just uh, request your free ticket, and then you can access all the content. Jonathan and I put together a, a presentation talking about the a, a calendar year of recruiting volunteers and leaders that sets you up for, uh, frankly, they set you up for all areas of church, but specifically, we're going to be drilling in on how you get these leaders that are going to help you market the church and move the church forward. So yeah. we are really, yeah. really excited. I mean, they're going to, that, I'm telling you, he told, Ryan told us the other day about the, I mean, they're going to talk about the guest experience. They're going to talk about uh, reviews. They're going to talk about their boot camp search engine optimization. I mean, you name it. Mm-hmm. This this is the first of its kind. It's going to be a great conversation. Yeah, awesome. Leaders.church slash conference. You will not regret jumping in there. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, the four things, again, just to recap of where you want to spend your marketing dollars to help you reach more people would be the website, the photography, the invite video, and then the social media. And then again, don't forget to sign up for the conference that Dick just mentioned to go to leaders.church slash conference, and you can get all signed up and you can be ready to go. And uh, so, Yeah. We what? certainly would encourage you to uh, uh, jump on, uh, uh, subscribe on any of your uh, uh, podcast platforms and rate and review us. We've got a review from uh, Pastor David. He said, Church Tips is a tremendous leader for the church. It's out front leading the way and helping pastors and churches move forward in their fresh and powerful in fresh and powerful ways. Wow, thanks, Pastor David. That's awesome. uh, in fact, if you rate and review us, we will probably, uh, you know, if we are if we really feel good about you that day, read one of your, read your review and uh, uh, get it on the Church Tips podcast. Anything else, Jonathan? That's it. Thank you so much for being with us today. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, be blessed. Hey, Jonathan here, real quick before you go. 
everything in your ministry rises and falls on your leadership. So investing in your leadership is essential to staying healthy and growing the ministry. And that's why I want to invite you to join us inside the Leaders.Church membership. This online streaming service for pastors gives you access to more than 300 videos plus training material to level up your leadership and improve your ministry skills. If you'd like to do that, I want to invite you to go to leaders.church slash boost. Again, that's leaders.church slash boost. Well, thanks again for joining us on the Church Tips Podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.